Welcome back to the channel. Today we are looking at the latest evolution in the local AI landscape, specifically the updated fork of the Stable Diffusion Forge web UI, which essentially serves as the direct continuation of the project, now commonly referred to as Forge Web UI Neo. While the interface update is great, the real headline here is the engine we can now put under the hood. I'm talking about Alibaba's new Z-Image Turbo model. If you haven't heard of it yet, Z-Image Turbo is a 6 billion parameter text-to-image model that is designed specifically for speed without sacrificing visual fidelity. It's what they call a distilled model, meaning it was trained by a larger teacher model to retain high-end aesthetic capabilities while drastically cutting down on the computing power required. It creates incredible photorealistic images. We're talking convincing skin texture, hair details, and cinematic lighting, using only about eight or nine sampling steps. That means if you're running a high-end consumer card like an RTX 4090, you can generate 10 24-pixel images in just two or three seconds. Even better, it's efficient enough to run comfortably on mid-range cards with decent VRAM, making it a very practical option for local creators. Right now, we only have this Turbo variant, which is the production-ready version built for fast inference. The team has mentioned a full base model is coming later for those who want to get into deep fine-tuning. But for generating high-quality images right now, Turbo is impressive. It even handles bilingual text rendering really well if you need to incorporate English or Chinese typography into your images. Now just a heads up, I've already made a video detailing the full installation process of the Stable Diffusion Forge Web UI Neo, so if you don't have the interface set up yet, you can find that link in the description. In this video we are focusing entirely on how to get the Z-Image Turbo GGUF models running inside that local UI. And for my Patreon members to make this as painless as possible, I've put together a dedicated one-click Windows installer. It automatically sets up WebUI Neo along with Python 3.12, Sage, and Flash Attention with Triton for Windows, and it will even download all the necessary models to their correct folders for you. It's everything you need to get this up and running instantly, and you can find that over on my Patreon page. Don't forget to like and smash that subscribe button so you don't miss out on more great AI content. All right, let's get this set up. Before we even touch the interface, you need to make sure you are running the absolute latest version of the Forge Web UI Neo installation. This is crucial because support for Z-Image Turbo was added very recently, so if you're on an older build, none of this is going to work. We have a little bit of prep work to do with downloading models and getting them into the right folders. I've put a written guide with direct links to everything in the description so you don't have to hunt for them. First, for the main Z-Image Turbo model, we are going to head over to the Jane 7 Hugging Face repository and click on the Files and Versions tab. In my testing, I found that the 5KM GGUF model offers a really good balance. It gives decent results and runs surprisingly fast even on my low-end RTX card with only 6 GB of VRAM. Obviously, if you have a beefier card with more compute, you should definitely opt for the 8.0 quant, as that's going to give you even better fidelity. Next, we need a text encoder. Head over to the Unsloth Quinn 34B Hugging Face page. We are looking for the 5KM GGUF clip model here. This specific model is great because it really helps keep VRAM usage down during generation. Finally, for the VAE, go to the Comfy Org Hugging Face page and grab the AE.Safe Tensors model file. A quick tip here, once you download that VAE, I recommend renaming it on your computer to something recognizable so it's easier to manage later. Once you have those three things downloaded, navigate to your Forge Neo UI models directory. We need to drag these into their specific home folders. Put the Z-Image Turbo GGUF file into your Stable Diffusion Models folder. The Quinn 34B model goes into your Text Encoder Models folder. For the VAE, you want to drop that into the VAE model folder located inside the Comfy UI directory. And again, make sure you've renamed it so you can spot it easily inside the interface. Now you can fire up Forge Neo. 
When the web interface loads, if you're coming from Automatic 11.11, this will look very familiar, but there are some specific tweaks we need to make for this model. Up in the top menu, look for the UI presets and select the option that says Lumina. Once that's set, go to your model dropdowns. For the checkpoint model, choose the Zimage Turbo GGUF file we just installed. The VAE and text encoder selection is slightly different here compared to the standard SD setup because the groups share the same selector tab. In the VAE text encoders dropdown, you actually need to select two things. Pick the Quinn 34B GGUF model we downloaded and also select that Zimage VAE model. Make sure both are active. Then look for the Diffusion and Low Bits dropdown and select Automatic FP16 LoRa. This is going to help any LoRa's you use run much more efficiently on lower VRAM devices. Leave the rest of the top menu configurations alone, they are already optimized for your hardware. Let's move down to the generation settings. You basically want to copy the settings I'm showing here. For the sampling method and schedule type, I personally prefer Euler and Beta but feel free to experiment there. The big one is the step count, set this to 9. Since this is a turbo model, it doesn't need a high step count to look good, and this keeps it lightning fast. Set your resolution to whatever you prefer, just keeping in mind that higher resolutions eat up more VRAM and take longer to render. Then, move over to the CFG setting. You must keep the CFG value at 1 for Z Image Turbo to work correctly and for the shift value, you can leave that at the default, which is 6. There is one more crucial setting near the bottom of the UI in the Never Oom Integrated tab. Make sure you select Enabled for both the UNet and the VAE. This maximizes offloading to your system RAM, which is a lifesaver for keeping VRAM consumption low during the generation process. Now you're ready to prompt. Type your description in the top box. This is also where you handle LORAs if you want to use them. Just navigate to the LORA tab in the submenu, click the model you want, and ensure the LORA tag appears in your prompt box. That verifies it's active. Once your prompt is set, hit Generate. On my RTX 4050 with just 6 GB of VRAM, these generations are flying by, typically taking less than a minute depending on the resolution. If you want to tweak existing images, the process is the same. Go to the Image to Image tab, upload your source picture, and apply the exact same settings we just covered. The only difference is you need to be careful with the denoising strength. Keep that value low if you want to preserve the original look. The higher you go, the more it will deviate from your source. That is pretty much the entire workflow for running Zimage Turbo locally. It's a powerful model, and once you have the settings dialed in, it's incredibly efficient. Just a quick reminder before I go, if dragging files and managing folders isn't your thing, I do have that one-click Windows installer available on my Patreon that sets all of this up automatically for you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.